Oh, wait, wait. Welcome to part two. I'm joined by Adam from San Francisco, but he's an Irish lad, aren't you, Adam? Born and raised. Absolutely. Should we give a big shout out to uh, Kent? Hope he's all right. You know, his pal passed away and he's uh, helping the pal's family and all that, grieving that. So I hope you're well, Kent. Uh, it'll be great to have you back soon. Uh, you're here. I hope everybody else is all right. I hope Julian's all right. He'll be listening. Julian's probably thinking, you know what, after seeing that, we on Garno and Joshua, because he called that, didn't he, Julian? And I, I did, I said he'd run over him, you know, and yep. uh, make a point. Just like he did against Kevin Johnson, he ran him over him, and he ran over Wallin, whereas Fury went to points with him, didn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, but Julian said uh, he'll run over him, and Julian will be thinking now, Joshua's had £50 million for five minutes' work. What's that? Ten million pound a minute. <laughs> Madness, isn't it? Really, when you when you think about it like that. And, and all these kids who are not getting the chance to fight on shows, there's kids up and down country who can't get a fight because everyone they want to fight to move up the ladder, they're all hoping that they're going to get the call from Saudi, either as you know, a, a, an early an early call on the show or something. It, what he's done, it's clogged up all the system. I know because I speak to matchmakers daily. Daily, mate. It's clogged it up, the system. And people are getting on at promoters in the UK about the shows and that, but what can they do? What, what can they do? It's no good getting on at the promoters or the managers and that, or, or, or even the matchmakers. It, it's this Saudi thing, Adam. Mm -hmm. No, you're you're 100% right. We'll kind of start off from the start. Like you said, what well said regarding Kent. I hope, um, you know, hope he's keeping well, and I hope... Um, Obviously, he's, he's doing okay with a loss, and fair play to him for for helping out the family. That doesn't surprise me. Seems like a top top bloke. Um, clogged is a perfect way of putting it in terms of what Saudi's doing to boxing. I was thinking about this actually watching that card the last night. If they're as serious as they say they are about boxing and in, ter in terms of staying in it in the long term, if I were uh, you know, if I was shoulder to shoulder with Turkey Al Sheik, if, uh, one of his advisors, anything like that, right? If he, if you could get it in his ear, they need to fund a massive event in the UK, because what I think is happening, and it's going to keep happening, is look, it's great that we're getting these fight, fights in Saudi. It's obviously great. I can't wait for better, better be Bev and, and Bivol and all the rest, but they're isolating it into a market that's completely unaffordable for the average man in the street. And even on top of that, even if you can't afford to go out, I'm not saying boxing and big events should be, you know, just a, a glorified piss up. But there's like anything else. If people are going out on their holidays, you want to have a beer, you want to have a laugh. You don't want to be worried when you're doing it. Um, So if, you know, they have more money than God, if they are in it for the long term, I think they'd be very, very wise to do a big Wembley event. Uh, like like once a year, like a yeah, like a you know a Christmas event or whatever way you want to call it, or even if they funded the five versus five in the UK, they need to do something because I think what's happening is like you're talking about they're screwing it up or they're alien alienating you know smaller domestic promoters and smaller domestic fighters, but they're also alienating the fans. Like it was a cool event and stuff the last day, and I know there's a bunch of celebrities there and all the rest. And I'm not just trying to put a downer on it, but the atmosphere is very poor, pal. You know, like, uh, like it's not that enjoyable to watch from your from your telly. Um, you know, you go, you you go back to big nights. I mean, even like the the Wilder Fury fights. But you go back even I know it's a long time ago. But you go back to to AJ Kalichko. You know, packed Wembley, unbelievable atmosphere. I know, obviously, we've given Bean Pelters a time. But great commentary from Bean, you know what I'm saying? Like an iconic event, you know. Um, the, the Saudi events just don't hit me like that. I know it was a great knockout, but like the atmosphere is not there. I don't know. What do you think? I think it's a bit take it or leave it in terms of the actual events. Whereas if they did a big one every year in the UK, then you kill multiple birds with one stone. You keep the hardcores happy. You keep the local people. You know, you keep the smaller promoters happy and. You know, you keep the ecosystem healthy. What do you think, man? Do you think that lot, Bricktop and Eddie Hills and Calla and all them lot, do you think that lot are going to have a pay-per-view 
at Tottenham or Wembley when they can go over there and pinch that kind of dough. You're having a laugh, aren't you? No, no, no. I, of course they wouldn't. But the point I'm making is the, the Saudis should have put up the dough that they're putting up. Like the Saudis should f- should fund a big event in the UK. Well, they're like doing it's linked... the whole point of it is to get their country out there, isn't it? They're not going to throw us out, are they? But what uh, should happen just... is Warren and Ern and Furies and all them should come back and put something into boxing. I mean, I'm telling you now, right? When Tyson Fury retires, do you think he's going to be promoting? Mm. He's not want to put want to put his poke up, is he? Not a bit, not a bit. But and, and I think like the the question that first came up and it will always surround Saudi, whether it's football, golf, tennis, boxing, it doesn't matter. People say they're doing this. They're sports washing, i.e., you know, they're 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 cleaning up their name in the Western world via sport. Um, but if you listen to to Bricktop or Hills or anybody else talking about his excellency, this guy loves boxing, he cares about the sport and stuff. The point I'm making is if 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 they're in it for the long term and if they do care about the sport, they should worry about what they're doing to the sport domestically. But if they're just in it to clean their name and get themselves out there, then they're obviously going to keep everything in Saudi. So I think they would be answering a greater question by their actions. Um, you know, if, if all things were being equal, like you say, these promoters haven't made a bunch of money doing this out in Saudi, they should come back, Eddie Hill, you know, Hills and Bricktop, they should start pumping some of this money back into the UK scene. But you're not going to do that as it stands, because it's going to rattle Turkey's cage, and, uh, and none of them want that. So, long story I'm short, if bothered about Willy Wonka's cage, he'll be put back in his cage. He'll be put back in his cage once, once, once they've had all the loot off. Once he sees it from for, for what they are, it's already yeah. them about, aren't they? With sick job, aren't they? Twice, yeah. And the spoon feeding his dribble, so I pin it up. An old belt on line. It's a novice in with a guy on slide. That's yep. the bottom line. Yep. That's the bottom line. Everything else is just hype. Eddie Hills in his white trousers and his blazer, looking like Popeye's son, hey, with his brass buttons. Get a grip of yourself, Lord Fontelroy. Oh, man, some of his get-ups are scandalous, to be fair. Hey, we oh, bo- they're scandalous. I'm sick of seeing him now. He's starting to do me head in. Sick yeah. of seeing him. He's everywhere. He's flogging a dead horse with Joshua. Look, they got to promised land, fair enough, but Joshua's CV is pish. Absolute <laughs> pish. And now they're selling him that he's a big bad alicart. For what? Franklin, Wally, Nelenius, and a, and, and, and a one fight novice. We are fake. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You know what? If that were Bricktop, Eddie Hills would be rinsing it. He'd be absolutely rinsing it. And do you know what? He shouldn't have even been sanctioned because if that geezer would have been hurt, they'd have had blood on their hands, that would. Like that, that touch wood. That he's all yeah. right. Oh, no, but he's not a boxer. He can't box eggs. No. I put Max against him. Yeah, he's a... Uh... rounds. Yeah, look, he's a puncher. I mean, I know he's... Obviously, he's had a love for boxing his whole life, but he's a puncher as opposed to a boxer. I think that got shown... And the Joshua fight, and you're dead right in terms of, you know, I mean, we say Eddie Hearn would, but, uh, you know, uh, kind of shit on it. I mean, he already did, like, you know, when when, when Fury was, before before we knew how the Fury and Gano fight was going to go, Eddie Hearn was slanting it from the rooftops. So it has already happened. Um, I agree with you. Like, it doesn't, put it like this, gun to my head now, a fully fit Fury in terms of, a guy that's actually done a proper camp, which I think he would for Joshua, because the last thing he wants is to lose to AJ. I think even more so than Usyk. Um, if a fully fit, fully mentally prepared Tyson Fury goes in with AJ in the same capacity tomorrow, I'm still taking Tyson Fury. But I think if you proposed this fight to me about two years ago or 18 months ago, I would have had it way wider in terms of uh, of who I think was going to win. Um, now, in saying that, it seems like Joshua's got his, his mojo back. He's a little bit more confident. But if he goes in there against a Fury and he gets schooled for three rounds where, like, he gets, you know, flashbacks of the Usyk fight where, like, he can't land his shots, he can't get his shots off, then he may crumble and fall apart in front of our eyes. Um, but all I'm saying is I think, 
you know, he's in a much better mental place than he would have been. Put it this way, if Fury and AJ got announced 18 months ago after the Usyk fight, I would have given AJ, I don't know, 10% chance. Like, I would have given him a puncher's chance. I, I think, yeah, I, but I think, because I think, like, you sure he's, you look at him against Franklin, he couldn't get shots off against Franklin. How would he get them off against Tyson Fury? Not that chance in hell. I think, no, I still have Fury a favorite. I probably have it 65, 60 40. Um, 60 40, probably something like that. Maybe uh, to Fury, I mean, um, maybe 65 35. If it's a fully fit Fury, like I know age waits for no man, but if he was fully prepared, you know, no boozing, nothing on the straight and narrow, I would probably make Fury at least a 60 40 favorite, probably 65 35. But I thought I didn't want to see that fight after he lost to Usyk. I thought AJ was done mentally, physically, the whole lot. So I think they have at least made it a wee bit more interesting. But I don't consider AJ the baddest man on the planet. Like, to me, he's still number three until it's proven otherwise. Usyk's demolished him twice. Um, I still fancy Fury to beat him if they fought tomorrow. So until he beats Tyson Fury or Usyk, he's still number three for me. Uh, no higher, no lower. Where do you see uh, Fury now, then? Because his ass fell out, didn't it, at the, uh, the presser. Where do you see where where do you see him now? Because they were sat like mice, weren't they? Him, old pop pop bang, Roman and uh uh Tommy Fumbles. They, they were sat like mice, weren't they? Tommy the Phantom. <laughs> what, what 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 do you think? What happened? Where where were the same energy that we got when Big John were bouncing off at screens and that when it were KSI? Where were that energy? Oh, Tommy the Phantom. Jeez, that's so funny, pal. Um, well, I think there's a couple of reasons to it. I think they're probably still embarrassed as to what happened in the Nganu fight. So, and I think, I know Fury says he would have fought John Jones in the, in the MMA, MMA cage, and I know he says, he says he'll still do it and all the rest. But what Nganu was saying to them is factually correct. If you put Big Francis and Ganu and Tyson Fury into a room and you lock that door and it's a steel door that can't be kicked down, Francis and Ganu's coming out a minute later with with his hands dripping in blood. Um, there's only one winner in that fight, you know. Um, I don't care who says what, and I think if if they're looking at it in the cold light of day, even when he's saying it like under you know if there's no boxing rules you're nothing. They, they kind of know it to be true. I think there's a wee bit too of they don't want to upset the Saudis and that, you know, they didn't want the whole thing to kick off and mar the press conference and stuff as well. But they were, they were quiet as quiet as mice. I couldn't actually believe it. Um, but I have Fury at number two and I say that because I have Usyk to beat him. No, I know they'll always come back and say he's a lineal champion and he's never been beat and blah, blah, blah. You can only go off their last performance or couple of performances you know, you've got a Fury that, that stumbled to a win versus Nganu. Some people said he lost that fight. You've got Del Boy Chisora for nine or ten rounds, whatever it was. Um, I know he smoked uh, White in an impressive fashion, but White just looked like he didn't belong. Uh, he didn't look like he came to fight. Whereas you look at those six last three performances, um, or we'll just focus on the last two specifically, the, the AJ fights, um, you know, the punch variety like we've talked about, Obviously, he showed that he can deal with a much bigger man. Um, you know, he was the B-side for both side, it's both fights. So, you know, Usyk's shown us way more in recent history. Um, and obviously, if Fury pulling out of this fight twice now, got cancelled because Ngani went the distance. Um, so I just think on form, um, and obviously Usyk beat Dubois. Um, I didn't think, uh, look, I know he kind of handled Dubois easily. I didn't think he looked as good as he did in the AJ fight, uh, either fight, to be honest, as he did in, when he was fighting Dubois, but he still took care of him easily. Um, like I said, man, we'll, we'll learn everything. We'll learn everything in the Usyk one fight. Like, for example, my original prediction was Fury will go, will go in and maul him. Um, I don't know that's a wild, simple, you know, oh, he's just going to beat him this way. Um, like, some of the finer points, if you look at Fury... We've talked about previously that like he doesn't break when the ref tells him to, and often no fighter does, but he makes a meal out of it where he lies on boys for as long as possible. And he's good off the clinch. Like I, I thought that if he is able to win versus Usyk, he would do his, his fighting in two phases. The first fight is getting close where he's landing shots and then obviously sitting on him. 
And then the second phase is when he does get, when they do break up, if he does have him in a, in a good position cornered, he would throw those shots coming off the break as well. Um, if he's not able to do that, I just don't see how he wins. So I think that's why, or sorry, I don't think that's why I have Usyk number one and Fury two. Um, but if Fury goes in there and he does what like Crawford did to Spence, where he just abuses Usyk, for four rounds and puts him out of his misery. Is anybody really going to want to see that fight again? Like if he absolutely no. manhandles him, do you know what I mean? So you like Frotch Boutte there, the rematch clause. Frotch wrote him off, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Uh, early and they they didn't have it. So I, I don't know, but you know, if what a lot of times in boxing, if there's a contract, like who wants to see Fury and Garno again? But watch him sell it. Watch him sell yeah. it because he got it on paper, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I would like to see Usyk, for multiple reasons, get the rematch. Like, e even if I don't want to see the fight from a competitive standpoint, like, I don't think it's going to happen, but if Fury went in from the first bell and just, you know, abused him and got him out of there in two or three rounds, um, I wouldn't necessarily want to see that happen to Usyk again, but I would love to see Usyk, you know, make 30 million or whatever the money he's going to make off it. Because there's too many sad tales in boxing where boys don't make enough money that they're entitled to. You know, to me, Usyk's a, you know, a generational grit. You know what I mean? So uh, he deserves every penny he gets. Um, but no, I'm intrigued, man. Like I say, as it gets closer, I'm more excited uh, for the Undisputed fight. Just hoping nothing else happens and, and we get to see it. Um did you uh did you get looking at the rest of the card, mate? Do you want to run through any of Yeah, yeah, I want to go through it with you. Roman Fury, what did you think against him against that Martin Spark? I'll be honest, Paul, I didn't I started watching um I think about ten o'clock my time. Um it was like midway through the prelims. Like the the first full fight I watched from start to finish was Mark Chamberlain versus um versus Gwyn. So I think I, I must I must have the Roman Fury fight. Uh, was he up well, to much? Was it much of a fight? Well, you know, he, he, he won on points. Look, he's a prospect, isn't he, Roman Fury? We can't really go heavy on him or say he's brilliant and that. He, he's going to need better tests, but he's getting used to all hype and he'll have a bit of pressure on him because he's a Fury, won't he, Roman? Mm -hmm. But if he's hanging around with his brothers and his dad all the time and he's around, it, it, it'll be water off a duck's back to him. So it's all about learning for a minute, you know, being around it all. Because a lot of young kids, they, they don't handle it good. Dave Allen didn't handle it good, did he? No. No, he started acting daft and that and being different characters every other day and all that and, and he ended done his own heading, didn't he? But yeah. he, about how you handle it. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, absolutely. But the re the rest of the car, Roman Fury, he won uh, half of them. You can't even read the names. Zayad Almayasov, uh, Christian Lopez Flores beat him on points. Then you've got Andre Noistoyai against uh, Juan Torres, KO'd him. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Chamberlain, Dun Gavin Gwynn, Justice on him. Mm -hmm. Kevin Larina, that were decent. Pat yeah. Duns Zang, we'll come to that in a minute. Uh, Madrimov, Dun Kerbanov, that were decent. But uh, mm -hmm. Joseph Parker, Jack McCann lost in against Louis Green, but Joseph Parker against Zang. Could a case be made for Parker now to be the number four in the world? You know, we've got Usyk, Fury, Joshua. Could a case be made for Parker to be number four or would Joyce or Dylan White have something to say about that because they've got wins on Parker, aren't they? They do, but as we're told the whole time, and what I believe it fully to be true, Styles make fights. Uh, I don't think you can make a decent case for Parker not being number four now. And I know certain boys have or even think of it because he beat uh, Zang. Yeah, sorry, actually, the only person that can have a real um case for number four. Yeah, I think is Philip Philippe Hergovic. Um, I mean, we've talked about Dillian White before. Should he be boxing or not? That's a completely different discussion. But he's been we'll an actor. to that in a minute. In a minute, Dylan yeah. White, don't go away. Don't even leave the kitchen or the fr <laughs> get a Kool Aid. Stay where you are, Dylan White. I'm coming to you in a bit. Yep. Sounds good. You're a, uh, you're a luxury at the moment. Yeah, go on. You were saying, Adam. 
No, you're good. Um, we'll do another yeah, one look, after this, Adam, because eh? we're on a roll, aren't we? Sounds great. I, I was going to say, let's do three. Absolutely, oh. Paul. Um, Parker's beat. Yeah, look, I have Parker number four. I know we make jokes and stuff, thinking they are all the rest. Look, he, he, his style is not my cup of tea. Um, you know, as as a character and a man, he seems like an absolute gentleman. So, uh, and he seems like an odd look. He seems like a good, honest dude. So I wouldn't uh, begrudge him the success he's getting. Um, I mean, look. Tick, you've got to respect the man. He got up off the canvas twice. You know what I mean? They were they were fairly, at least the first one was a good heavy knockdown. Um, I don't want to detract from him too much. But I mean, when I saw Zhang on the scales at 291, I know he's a massive guy. But I mean, 291, pal. Jesus, that's so much weight. And you could see like at the at the end of the fifth when he was going into the corner, he was full, full blowing, mouth breathing. I was kind of like, man, this is not looking good for uh for Zhang, even with the knockdowns. I mean, I think the worst stat uh that I've seen in a very long time, Zhang threw zero punches in round twelve. Zero. Literally not a punch. Um Zhang's that big. Yeah. You know why? Tell me. So why why is the he eats? <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave that one off, but uh, I mean, uh, mate, I don't know, I don't know what frame you need for two ninety one to be a good number going into a heavyweight fight. I mean, we go back to Nganu. I know he got sparked out, but he was two seventy five and not a lick of fat on him. Now his frame is is one in a million. Do you know what I mean? I mean, he looks, you know, he looks big beside Joshua. Um. But, you know, it's, I don't know. I just didn't think Zhang looked healthy uh, on the scales. I know he knocked him down in the fourth and he was celebrating like he was out cold on the floor. Uh, and I know he's 40, but uh, if oh, he's going to so take the... He like he's about 80. Yeah. What, look, what did if, he if weigh in at? What's that? What did he weigh, Zhang? 291 pounds. Well, I don't know what that is in store. 41 of that's that giant mole. <laughs> so he's really a two fifty, isn't he? He's a it's like Jenny Jenny Sack had to get the mole removed from her ass, right? That's one of those. Oh um, no, Jenny Sack. Jenny Sack's <laughs> all right, man. Jenny Sack was all right, to be fair. Um you know you're gonna look, get I, if you're living with Jenny Sack. What? You know, you know, you know you should, you know why Vito got that big, don't you? He was always round at Jenny Sacks. <laughs> For some ZT. He was hiding, hiding the Mars bars down in the basement. Do you remember? Oh, man. And, and twirls. Uh, she did. And to be fair, I didn't mind her, her choice of uh, of chocolates. I was I was pretty on board. But uh, look, if, if all joking aside, if Zhang's going to take the rematch, uh, I think he needs to lose a good two stone. And I know he's a big man, and I know he's 40, and that'll be tough. But... You know, you hold the interim WBO heavyweight belt, you can't be gassing out after five rounds. You know what I mean? Like, just that can't be in the, that can't be in the job description. So, uh, this you know, and, this, and, this time next year, Zang will be a fisherman looking for sushi. Trust me, mate, he's finished. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, I don't know if he, uh, he says he wants it. I don't know if he wants to. It's weird too, like, because, you know, all of last week, you know, and I think rightly so, we're talking about Jang, like he's, uh, you know, he's the boogeyman of the division being avoided and whatnot. But, uh, you know, now it's just like he's he's finished overnight. Like, um, look, like I said, Parker did well. He dug in. He got himself off off the deck. But in my opinion, Jang was completely gassed from round six on, and he still managed to put Parker down. Um. But I Parker won in the fight. There was no robbery. There was no nothing. I mean, Zhang won probably four rounds and two of them he got a 10-8. Um, but uh, look, we'll give Parker credit. Um, I don't think it was some sort of boxing masterclass. I think it was more about showing grit and, you know, not swallowing it. And he did that, full credit to him. Um, I think this was a more a case of, you know, Zhang completely falling apart down the stretch. Um I don't know. I don't really want to see it again. 
Uh, I'm not overly interested. I mean, if it's anything like the first fight, it was an interesting fight for, again, four or five rounds. But after you could see, Zhang just couldn't, in my opinion, couldn't throw shots after six and seven. And look, he's like, he's 40 years old. He's probably filled with lactic acid. He just looked like he seized up. But uh, credit to Parker. He did what he had to do, same as AJ. And he moves on to the next one. Yeah, he does. Uh, Parker the Stinkinator, a case being made for number four, but Ergovic uh, might have something to say about that. It's probably going to be Ergovic then, isn't it, really? And Parker vying for number four, isn't it, do you think? Yeah. Do you know what? And It's probably unfair to both guys that that fight would happen. But we saw Parker's last two fights. He's in there against a what looks like a finished Deontay Wilder, a definitely diminished version. He went in there with Big Bang, who did have momentum, but it looked like he, he literally turned into a statue after six rounds. Um, Hergovic would, to me, would pose, you know, he's not that dissimilar from Parker. Um, you know, he's relatively young, all things considered. Obviously, an Olympian, all the rest. I think I think that would be a really good barometer. You know how people are saying Andy Lee's done such an amazing job, a good link up with Parker. I think if you could go in there and beat Hergovic convincingly, I would completely jump on the the um you know the Parker Andy Lee train because I'm not trying to be too much of a detractor. I'm genuinely not, but I don't think he fought near the best versions of Deontay Wilder or of Gilles Zhang. Um, so I think there has to be some question marks in there. But if he goes in there and fights a Hergovic and there's no injuries, there's no nothing, then he's undoubtedly number four. It's not even close. So uh, I would like to see that fight on paper. Why not? Let's go. Yeah. Do you think Andy Lee's getting a lot of credit for Parker? He is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, every, everywhere you look, everywhere you talk, and I, look, I have no evidence to say he's done a bad job. I mean, look, Parker's won... Uh, all of his fights, bar the Joe Joyce fight, since they've linked up. I think there's been a couple of, you know, okay performances in there, not great against Massey and McKean and stuff. But uh, look, all things considered, what they're six and one as a partnership, um, or seven and one, two wins against Dale Boy. So he hasn't done much wrong, in all fairness. Um, I mean, Parker does look, I know they work with George Lockhart too, and I know your thoughts on strength and conditioning coach, but he loves that George Lockhart. Um, Parker did show some nice stuff in the fight, like in terms of like he's he's awful quick for a heavyweight. I know uh, Zhang's quite stationary, but he gets in there with that one two very quick, and he gets back out. Um, you know he doesn't hit like a train, but you know he's he's got nice clean crisp shots, and he's got good timing in terms of getting in and out. So I think oh, I think Lee's definitely done some good. I'm just not fully sold on the whole. You know, this is a renaissance, you know what I mean? So, like I said, if, if he goes in against a young game guy uh, like Hergovic and he uh, he doesn't have to stop him, he just has to win clearly, then uh, then I think it'll justify him leaving, uh, Parker leaving as his old coach. So, I would like to see him just in a, a competitive fight next where there's no uh, there's no easy excuses, you know what I mean? For or it's not easy excuses. There's nothing easy for us to point to and say, you know, Wilder was past his best, or Zhang gassed out, or you know, even fight two young guys, semi young guys, and tear the head off each other, and then we can probably better assess how him and Lee are doing. Do you think a case can be made then that Ben Davidson, Andy Lee, and Shane McGuigan are the new guard now, established new guard? Uh uh yeah, yes, I think I think Shea McGuigan is more proven than uh than Davison and uh and Lee, and I mean that with respect. Um you know, I'm a huge, huge Karen Frampton fan. I wasn't a fan of uh I need to buy his book actually, because it's all in there. But I wasn't a huge fan of what transpired with him and the McGuigans. They settled out of court. Uh, to me, you don't settle out of... You, it seemed like there was something awry. And I know some details didn't come out and all the rest. Um, so that's always soured, the McGuigan's image, at least for me. Uh, but, you know, Shane seems like a good coach, all things considered. You know what I mean? Um, female box and male box and the whole lot. So I think he's a bit more proven than Davison and Lee. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're on course. I mean, as it stands, I would probably go... 
I'd probably go McGuigan, uh, Davis and Lee. Uh, I'm not saying that can't change. Um, but yeah, that's probably how I would have it. That's how I would have it right now. Yeah. Uh, we'll finish off on this Nick Ball one. What did you think about that We at Vargas? Uh, it was a weird, it was a fight of two halves, really. I thought... Um, I thought Vargas controlled the first, I think it was roughly six, it was definitely five, probably six rounds. Um, I thought, obviously, he was a much taller guy. I thought Ball struggled with kind of closing the distance. Um, I thought Vargas made a meal, you know. Uh, some people would say, you know, he was kind of employing, like, Mourinho tactics back in the day where he was, you know, overly complaining about everything and making a big song and dance. Yeah. I think Vargas wanted to slow down the fight where he could. Uh, I thought the ball, he obviously came on very strong. Um, but I didn't score it exactly, mate. I mean, like I said, I thought it was a, a fight of two halves. Um, I thought Vargas dominated the first. I mean, he didn't do that much. He didn't have a lot of clean work, but it was more ball, wasn't having really any success. And then ball kind of figured it out. Um, but, uh, but look, I, I don't think people are saying ball won by three or four rounds. I know he had two knockdowns. I don't think he like clearly, clearly won. I would need to go back, re back, and rewatch it and score it. But um, you don't like seeing draws in boxing, uh, especially when it means you know obviously the guy retains his title. But uh, I, I don't think there was like a robbery uh, in terms of the draw. Um, yeah, man. What what about yourself? What what were your thoughts? Uh, I'm happy with draw, are you? I mean, I think, I think it might be. The fairest result in that fight, just because, like the the first knockdown, like ball does pull him. I know. Look, it was a shot that put him down. I'm not going to say it isn't, and I do think Vargas was kind of like the boy that cried wolf in terms of he was calling for stuff and he was slowing down the fight. But in order for ball to land that shot, he does drag him and throw him around. Um, so. Other refs would have pulled him up on that, you know what I mean? Probably maybe giving him a warning. So there's certain wee things that happened in the fight that maybe don't happen under a certain other ref. Um, the canvas didn't seem perfect either. You know, there were, you, you saw certain points where like it, it seemed like Vargas's kind of heel was getting caught up and his foot was getting caught. So I, I, like I said, I don't like draws in boxing that much. Uh, I think that was probably as fair a draw as I've seen in a long, long time. So I didn't mind it. Um, I mean, I think if Ball had have maybe figured out what he figured out in the second half, if he had figured it out maybe a round or definitely two rounds earlier, I think he would have won the fight no problem. But uh, yeah, I don't mind the draw, pal. Pretty pretty fair. Uh, as as long as Ball gets a, gets a crack at the rematch. Um, you know, I, I'm not big on rematches and stuff, but he did, he did finish it strongly. Um and you know like we talked about when it, when a draw happens obviously the the interim champion retains the belt so um yeah I didn't mind the draw in all honesty uh what do you think about the the show as a whole then and you know the whole, uh, the actual aftermath and I'm not an hype in it you know about Joshua being back and all this and what what do you think about it all after. <laughs> Uh, he won a good, he won a good finish, and he did his job, didn't he? But look, he, he's yeah. been spoon fed four guys, hasn't he? And we're now supposed to believe that he's baddest man on planet. I can't. No. We heard that when ABI won WBO, didn't we? Off his old man Bazar Epstein, didn't we? Yeah. Um, no, look, the, the, the baddest man on the planet. That's that's just not real. They'll, they'll tell you it is, and you'll get certain people who believe it. But it's just you know. Joshua has a lot more wrongs to right from those two sick fights and he hasn't done it with the four guys that he's beaten. I do give him credit for being active and staying busy. Um, it's unsurprising. You, you know what you're going to get from certain guys after in the aftermath. Look, credit where credit's due. I thought the card itself uh, turned out to be really good. Like the, the Mark Chamberlain fight, I thought that was a really good performance. Um, you know, he came in, he's just good pressure. Um... You know, and uh, like Terry was talking about Gwyn's head moving and stuff. I will agree with it. He was kind of an easy target to make, but from the first bell, Chamberlain 
you know, just put pedal to the metal and put him under pressure for the whole fight. So I enjoyed that fight. I thought it was good performance, good story. The fact that he got kind of called in on short notice. Um, the Mabadaw fight was good as well. Um, like you said, the, 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 the Kevin Lorena fight was good to watch. Um, I mean, I thought that the first four or five rounds of the, the Zhang Parker fight were entertaining. And then it was kind of very, very lackluster. And obviously the AJ knockout was, was a show real knockout. Um, <laughs> Whatever about the matchups on paper, man, I thought like the way the card played out, I thought it was was mostly very entertaining. Uh, so credit where credit's due to everybody involved. The aftermath, like we talked about, it is what it is. You know what you're going to get from Eddie. You know now oh, because... Parker AJ, to... Parker AJ too, the talking, aren't they, today? Oh, give me... I mean, that first Don't fight... buy into I... that, Parker AJ too. Nobody, man. That first fight was... Maybe that was the day the stinking either nickname. Feel like a Bell you Chalemba, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, it was just such a bad fight to watch. Um, I thought the referee Ian was poor too. I thought the uh, the referee was kind of overly fair on AJ, but you know, it seemed to me that Parker wanted to work on the inside when when he was able to clinch, and obviously the ref was just constantly breaking them early. But if you don't have a plan B, then I'm not going to make excuses for you. You know, he had nothing for Joshua when he wasn't able to work on the inside. Terrible fight to watch. Um, yeah, I don't. I know they've both improved, maybe, but uh, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be jumping to see. Uh, to see them do it again. You know, but um, look, it's a bit more civilized the aftermath because again, Bricktop and, and Eddie Hills and the whole crew, they're all in bed with each other now, so. You know, you're not getting it's it's a bit of a loving, you know what I mean? There's a lot of kumbaya going on. This this guy was good, that guy was good, we're standing up, we're clapping. Uh it reminds me a bit of back in the day. Do you remember when when they would have like uh celebrity singers on the X Factor? You get Simon Cowell and all standing up at the end, giving the standing ovation, even if they were crap, you know what I mean? Like it reminds me of that a wee bit. But uh yeah, mate. Um as long as May 18 happens, I don't care. You know, they can they can spin this whatever way they want. But my next worry about Saudi or my next uh and you know, whatever I'm thinking about is just uh undisputed. So um mate, do you wanna jump on? You wanna send another link? Yeah, I'll send you another link. Two seconds then. Nice one. Cheers, bud. Bye. Thanks for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. Please join us on part three. Pop pop bang. <laughs>